Welcome back. It's time for us to take a look at the front pages of some national dailies. And after that, we'll be joined by our analyst who is already set to discuss these headlines with us. We'll begin with the Guardian newspaper. The Guardian newspaper leads with NPC shuns bleeding economy raises interest rate to 18.5%. Details of that is on page six of the Guardian newspaper. So you have Buhari retains cabinet till May 29th, six Senate approval for judgment debts. We'll be taking a look at that today uh, on the breakfast. Uh, page six is where you have details of that. Buhari retains cabinet till May 29th and six Senate approval for judgment debts. Naira faces downside risk slumps to 760 Naira uh, a dollar at black market. Concerns as Buhari allegedly waives 70 billion Naira spectrum fee for telcos. Details of that on page 3. And above the masthead you have an editorial. Buhari's fragile pieces. An economic scorecard full of trauma. That's the third edition. So when you pick up the Guardian newspaper, you find out details of that. And uh, that is the much I will take from the Guardian newspaper. Okay, the next one will be uh, Daily Independent. Daily Independent uh, leads with Kiyamo to Buhari. Ministers of State were idle. It's unlawful. Uh, the writer is Ministers of State Job minus, minus for Buhari's government, according to the minister. You find that on page 29. Kiyamo is talking now mm -hmm. <laughs> against shocked. what Buhari did. I am shocked. Oh, dear Kiyamo. God. Cash crunch drags Nigeria's economy down to 2.31%. You'll find that on page 7. Okay. Another one is High Chief Government Ekwema Polo, uh, otherwise known as Tom Polo. Uh, they, okay, that shouldn't be so much of a, a headline <laughs> where he's going to be crowned or something. Salute to the outgoing president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Muhammadu Buhari GCFR, and the president-elect Ashiu Bola Tinubu. Okay, I'm sure that's uh, the write-up by a government at Pema Polo, who was given the contract, by the way, to take care of the pipelines and um, make sure he wards off uh, all the thieves uh, who vandalize our pipelines. Well, um, the they in Daily Independent doesn't have much of headlines there, uh, but you can just see on your screen. The next newspaper is Business Day. Business Day newspaper. It leads with economy slows as Naira Crunch erases all gains. The riders, manufacturing sector growth hits three-year low in first quarter. Page 35 is uh, where details of that is. And then harder times for businesses as CBN raises rate again. Page 6 is where details of that is on business day. Explainer. Implication of Tribunal Consolidation of Atiku OB APM Petitions Against Tenubu. Uh, and then Inara fails to lift informal economy remittances 19 months after. Details of that is on page 6 of the, nation's, uh, of, of the Business Day newspaper. Nigeria is boiling. Fixing Nigeria's Economy Series is a series of writing on Nigeria's economy, and they've tagged it, Nigeria is Boiling. You, you want to read details of that on page 6 of Business Day newspaper. And that's the much I'll be taking from Business Day newspaper. Okay. Um, the punch. The punch is next. And the punch begins or leads with countdown to handover. FEC holds last session, governors dissolve cabinets. And the writer is Sonwolu, uh, asks uh, appointees to quit office. Ganduje hands over documents to governor elect. Okay, now we also still have that, uh, that write up by government at Pemapolo. So that means 
he might be continuing as the person who is in charge of the uh, pipelines. But those were the headlines at the front page of the punch. Just the countdown to hand over Fekhold's last session. So Buhari presided over the last uh, session um, and then the governors dissolve their cabinets, including uh, Somolu, who was asked appointees to quit office, and Ganjude uh, will hand over documents to, or has handed over documents to governor elect. Okay, so we've been joined by our analyst, Ezekiel Nya Etok, public affairs analyst from Akwaibom State. Good morning, Mr. Ezekiel. Good morning. I like that last part from Akwaibom State. I love that. <laughs> you are proud of your state, aren't you? Yes, so much. All right, so we are going to start with the Guardian newspaper. Let's start with this very strong headline. Buhari retains cabinet till May 29. Yes, we know that. But six Senate approval for judgment debts. Let's begin with that, Mr. Itok. You know, um, I just can't get over how somebody can be so absolutely insensitive or I don't know whether to use the word ignorant or unaware of the sentiment of the nation with respect to this borrowing, 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 debt, 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 except there is something they are not telling us. Why am I saying so? Now, how many days after, in fact, in your last, your valedictory session, you are telling us to give approval to pay judgment debts. You've been in office for eight years. Is it that you've realized that there are certain last things you need to grab? Because the, it, it's either out of very high nationalistic instinct or intuition or out of pecuniary consideration that you're asking for over 700 billion for judgment debt. Now, in court, you have what they call ex parte you know, application, which is an application that you don't need to hear from the other party. Something needs to be done immediately. If not so, something terrible could happen. So this, this appears ex parte. Now, what will go wrong if the next administration that is next week can look into that matter. Why must it be resolved here and now? Is it that you have a court in it? Is it that you want to ensure that you can put in record that I am the one that guaranteed the release of the funds, so I need to have my own? Because if somebody else comes to it, it's like it's like I'm into real estate, and in our properties we have um, you know commission for the agent. So whoever brought the buyer is the one that is going to get the commission. So you want to put on record that you are the one that brought the buyer, you are the one that gave the approval, and as a result, the court should come to you and not to the disbursing agency. There's something you need to tell me that I'm not understanding, because I really honestly, sincerely cannot see the urgency for you to, I mean, I mean, the sentiment, that's what you call, I keep saying this, emotional intelligence. The nation is, is living with this debt you know, the high propensity, you know, to borrow, borrow, borrow. Now but, we want to, where is this money coming from that we want to use to pay debt? Where are we doing the borrow to pay debt? Yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. But this government have also, in their defense, said that their borrowings is still within the limit. No, no, that no, no. They should sister, be borrowing. Uh, see, let me say this. I'm sorry to butt in. Let the media try very hard not to just be a reporting agency but to be fourth estate of the realm because i know you know that borrowing has primarily and fundamentally to do with re ability to repay that's where integrity comes in 
So don't tell me about the economic latitude of you can borrow because, you know, a debt to whatever ratio. No, the most important consideration in borrowing is ability to repay. And inability to repay, we do not have that resources. Debt to capacity to repay. We don't have, and we are intelligent. Nigerians are about the most intelligent set of people globally. I've gone around the world, and there's no way I go, no meeting that I'm not, I'm not respected, I'm not honored, because I have that thing that Nigerians have, which is something good between my ears. We have that rare gift. So nobody should come to government and tell me, please, how do you want to repay this? Because we are, we are living debt for, the, for our grandchildren, not even our children. Well, in addition to this question of how do they want to repay it, it's also the question of how transparent the disbursement of this judgment. Thank um, you. I are, agree with it? you there. Completely. You see, you want to pay $704 billion on judgment debt. I think the first thing you will do is come clean to Nigerians that these are the debts. These were the understandings that we had. These were the covenants. This bring everything out. There's been so much shrouded in mystery and secrecy. You know, let me tell you something. A man will come one day that will open certain rooms and we see what is inside. You will be shocked that your legal system corrupts agreements and covenants for their ultimate pecuniary interest. Agreements are signed deliberately and intentionally to be skewed in secrecy and you know, you know, this thing where it is not defined clearly and it's not a mistake. So that it can be interpreted anyhow. At the end of the day, they go back to share the money. Consultancies, civil servants, with all due respect, some of them, some civil servants rank amongst the most, the most, the, the, the richest people. And I'm not saying this as something that we don't all know how the properties in Abuja, more than half of it can be linked to civil servants one way or the other. We know this. Where did they get the money from? I'm a consultant. You go for a business and a civil servant looks you in the eye and say, boss, I'm sure you know that this thing, you know, the, you know have a, maybe a billion naira project. And they will tell you that the markup is about maybe uh, 400 million. And in the 400 million, they are going to give you about 100 million. Then the other 300, they will give it to a guy. They will, you know. This conversation I've just said, I want an average Nigerian consultant to tell me that I'm saying something that is, wow, revelation to him. It's what we all know. So the system is skewed such that the, 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 the larger society is ripped off by a few people that we entrusted with and paid them their salaries. So when we talk in terms of all this corruption, politician has no power to be corrupt if they do not find allies in two places. One, the civil service. Two, the banks. Mm -hmm. We really need to bring, God has to come, have a, find a way of giving us this man that will come and say, guys, let's draw the line, enough is enough. Like Let's say this would be right. That God has to find a way yeah. to. Uh, yeah. However, th these monies uh, were, were all through the issuance of promissory notes, meaning that uh, whether we like it or not, we are, this money is as good as being spent, isn't it? Um, I, I wouldn't say so. You see, I wanted to be a government. We are still on because, you know, I've said to people, even especially, this, is, this, is, this information is very important, mm. where we are today. Even if Mr. Tinobu is sworn in on the 29th, that is just the first step in four legs. So, Enjoy that victory with cautious optimism because the first step is that you are declared the winner. There's a second step, which is that you go to the tribunal and it can be taken from you. Even if you win at the tribunal, there's a third step, which is that you go to the appeal court. 
it can be taken away from you. Even if you win at the appeal court, it is a final stage where the Supreme Court, look at that of Oshun State. Six months after, it's only about two weeks ago that Mr. Adeleke can sit well and say, I am the governor. On that day, it could have been nullified. So until you get to this last stage, enjoy your victory with cautious optimism. And if you're a loser and you're in the tribunal, keep faith alive. But let's come back to the issue, that the relevance here. Hmm. I wanted to be, or I want to be a governor. One of the things that you need to have in mind, if you mean well, is that there are certain things you need to revisit. Because if somebody willed my estate to you in error, yes, he willed it to you, but I can appeal. Hmm. I can tell, let, let's come back. Guy, we are owing you seven billion. That's great. Please, exactly what did you do? Now, you did 10 kilometers of road at that time. Hmm. Now, what was the rate? Because you can go back and find the rates. What were the peculiarities? Can you bring the drawings? At the end of the day, if this uh, stuff, this road of seven kilometers, of a, a kilometer, a billion per kilometer, should have been seven billion, and you were given at 15 billion, you yourself will know you've already collected 10. Guy, just close the door and walk. Let's not go into it. So the, the fact that there's been a covenant, there's been, it does not mean that that covenant cannot be reviewed with, with, with the intent to ensure, you know, probity and transparency and accountability. And where that is correct, the least you can do is tell this guy, this is where we are, we are owing you, let's start to restructure our debt and pay you this way, that way. They don't come and tell me, bring this 704 billion for me to pay for covenants that we had. Let the new administration come and interrogate those covenants and then be, you know, uh, conscientious enough to know what is right and do it. And if you don't have the capacity to do it, appeal to the people and restructure it. That is integrity. That's what will inspire confidence in investors to come in and say, oh, this government, they are doing the right thing the right way. Most of the people that do business with Nigeria are people who are fraudulent. I'm sorry to say that because a lot of people who mean well, when they come in, the terms and conditions don't favor them. So they go back. So all these bogus figures that they give us, mm. I think that I pray that Mr. Ashiwaju sees this as a national commitment and not an, an entitlement and, and, and a means for him to reward God for how God has been merciful and gracious to him over these years. If he takes that as the hallmark or as the matching order of his administration, we will get many things right. But if it is an emilokon mentality, then I'm sure, I'm, I'm sorry to say we are in for a rough ride, but God still has a final say. I like it that um, you are very faithful and you are saying God will do this, God will do that. We believe in God so much yeah. and uh, yeah. God will rise for us one day. I don't know when the Thanksgiving of uh, the president-elect will be. Is it right now after the inauguration or after the tribunal gives his final judgment? I don't know what that will be. Uh, but... Um, I'm glad. Now, you are an architect and you do real estate. You keep telling us that. And we know that to do real estate, it will also mean that you'll take a lot of loans to do what you need to do and then pay back. Sorry. And that is why you know so much that um, the key thing in taking a loan is your ability to repay. Now, ability to repay also is tied to the interest rate. In spite of the bleeding economy, the monetary policy uh, has, or the MPC, has raised the interest rate to 18.5% without consideration of how the economy is and how, what the people are feeling. So for you who uh, takes loans to do your real estate, I'm sure it affects you, and it affects a lot of other businesses. How do you think the economy would fare after uh -oh. the MPC has raised this uh, interest rate this high? I'll tell you this for free. I really don't know. You know, there are people who have just been in government for the past 20 years benefiting from government. They take free money. I think that we need to, I don't know how we can do our leadership recruitment such that anybody that has not had a private sector 
you know, um, experience should not be vested with government governance uh, uh, responsibility. Because some of these people really don't know what business, doing business is all about. They really don't understand. They just take money from contracts. They take money from their understanding. They take money and they don't know what wealth creation means. I sit down here as a businessman and I just can't, you know, in business, you say the circle must close. The circle must close, which means you take money, you execute, you sell, you get back the money, you return the money. At that return, the money is when the circle closes. And if you cannot, if I do my real estate analysis and I, I'm building houses, let's say 100 houses at, say, um, 100, no, let me come down, at 10, 10 million, that's about a billion. Then I'm asking myself, I'm going to take a billion. Now, how much am I going to build the houses and the building types and the environment? How much will I sell the houses? Now, the people I'm going to sell, do I have these numbers within the time frame that I'm getting this? Because if, if, if at the end of the, I finish, I get the money, I finish building, I don't get the buyers with the capacity to repay the money at the end of the day. And my price differential does not give you the margin to cover my cost of building, cost of consultancies, cost of running my business and give me a margin, cost of the profit to return it. I don't do it. I don't do it. There are certain types of buildings I will not do in Aquaibo. As good as it because the numbers will not add up. Those buildings, they can add up in Abuja because I have the numbers. They can add up in Lagos because I have the numbers. It's just you thinking right as a businessman, not just coming into government, collect loan, collect loan, don't worry, bring, collect loan. No, and people and civil servants are telling you how to package the loan and you collect the loan. And at the end, you're not asking the most fundamental question. How will the circle close? Now, coming back to the issue of interest rate, how do you do business? To start with, you are telling me that then your margin must be above 30% if you are collecting at 18%, 18.5. Your margin must be above 30%. Now, which house am I going to build so that at the end of the day, cost of materials, cost of management, cost of um, you know funds, I will have a 30% margin to be able to match the cost of interest. It's not going to work. So I'm asking myself, Ezekiel, why do you want to go and borrow money? Why don't you just see how you can appeal to people and market what you have and then use the money that you market to be able to and that that's incremental you know uh, building of the estate is not as good because if you want to do an estate of 50 houses and then you can just build one at a time one at a time at five houses people are not interested in moving in because you don't have that, uh, that ecosystem for people to have that community but if i borrowed money out of the 50 houses to do 30 at a go now, you discover that you they, because of the inspiration that the people see of the thing moving and the number of people, before you know people have come into the estate, now that will attract more people in, you'll be able to do more. So business people are no longer doing business in a way that is sustainable. They are doing a way they can afford because if I go carry loan, at the end of three years, that estate is no longer mine. The bank will take over the estate. People are not thinking like businessmen. An economy runs on businessmen, not government. Every economy runs on businessmen, the private sector initiative. Even the employment, how many people are employed by Nigeria in, in Nigerian government? Everybody, all the civil servants put together. I don't know if they are, they are more than one million or something. But how many are we? 200 and something million people. So the question is, what runs the system? What runs the economy? Now, you have to find a way of encouraging production. Production can never happen at a scale where you don't have, you know, very, very single-digit interest rate. It, it encourages production. It is that production that oils the wheel of the system. It's that production that will now give company internally generated revenue which is what we're talking about. Where are you getting your international re internally generated revenue from, if not taxes? What can you have taxes when the companies are not running? How the com can the companies run when they'll be working for banks and they are not interested? So everybody just cooling down. And all these projections they mean on taxes, they don't meet it because the system is just not working. I'm a private sector person, and the worst thing you want to do at this time is you tell me to go to the bank and get money at high interest rate when the earning power of the people is less. So how are they going to get money to buy my houses? 
for me to be able to sell and repay the interest and have more margin to continue my business. I don't know. It's, 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 it's a discussion that is just not adding up with me at all. This economy, this our governance, we need to rework it and remove so much politics from governance. Let me end on this note because I know there's so much and the time is not... You see, we, the day we come to discover that we have two systems. One is called politics. The other one is called governance. Politics is like the engineers. They get dirty. They knock. They push. They do all sorts of things. Do you understand me? To get the aircraft working. That is politics. Engineer. They speak loud and say they are loud. They are dirty. They are all sorts of things. When the aircraft is ready, comes governance, like the pilot. The pilot works on certain protocols of making sure that you are precise, you are focused, you are professional, you are ethical. Those are the fundamentals. Those are the guiding principles of the pilot. Those are the guiding principles of government and people that come into governance. That is why I hated Emiloko. Governance is not entitlement. It's a, not a right. Let him discover, let him come now and say, I wanted it because I have an understanding of government and governance. And I will forgive him and apologize to him. And come and do things right. Round pegs in round holes. No longer reward system. And then you'll be able to refocus Nigeria and move us in the direction where we are no longer bringing yeah. politics into governance, but we are bringing even governance into politics so that our politics is even better organized and more focused. Mr. Etok, yeah, round pegs and round holes. That takes me to the next headlines on the Daily Independent. Kayamo to Buhari, ministers of state were idle. It's unlawful. Minister of state job minus for Buhari's government. That's Kayamo speaking there. Please respond to that. Two things. Two things. Number one, how is it that on the day that they are telling you thank you, goodbye, that you now discover that <laughs> you know you were you were what you were doing was unconstitutional? Hmm. Why? Why today? Why today? Have you just discovered you should have told us wow that last night I had a dream. The dream led me to read a section of the constitution that I had not read all the while, not being not minding that I'm a senior advocate of Nigeria. Nigerians, this is the dream I had. The office of the Minister of State is unconstitutional. It shouldn't have been. And then Nigerians will say, wow, what a dream. Thank God for the dream. Then we look into it. But if you have always known this, why did you keep quiet? Number mm -hmm. one. That's number two. You have effectively told us that you have been doing something that has been unconstitutional and getting money. Mm -hmm. As a man of honor, as a man of integrity, can you refund all the monies you have occupied in that illegal office so that we now know that this is, you are really, really, this restitution, and you are really, really a man of integrity? Outside of those two considerations, then, um, but all said, I think that we must agree that he has brought up a fundamental issue, which I agree with. You are taken as a minister from a quite state. And don't go there and become a junior minister. No. Instead, if you must do that, split all the work's responsibilities. It doesn't, it doesn't, you're not going to pay more. You're not going to add more. I'm, I can have 100 offices, only that I bring down all the monies that I've been spending in all and share it amongst the people. You can no longer have five cars. Every minister can have a maximum of two cars or three. So that you can bring down and give them the responsibilities and let them superintend over it and give the report. So he's got a point, but I'm wondering why he had to wait all this while before he, can, he could make that point. Well, wait and see whether this incoming administration is going to also go ahead with the job for the boys syndrome that we've known uh, our people to have been engaged in. Thank you so much, Mr. Ezekiel Anya Etok. Thank you for your time. Every well, that's the much you have for you on Off the Press. Do stay with us. The breakfast continues in a moment. <laughs>